What's it about? What's it about? Oh, for the grass? Yeah. Alright, good. I had to post it because you didn't take the mail. That's right. There you go. You can take it and take the sign off if you want. So you have a copy of it. Alright. Alright, have a good one. Have day. a good one. See you later. Happy holidays. Happy day to you. Come on, bro. Peaceful. Come on, peaceful. Come on, peaceful. Haven City Hall.
provide additional information as to whether or not the structure would qualify or would uh, meet the requirements of the code for what it was uh, claiming that they are being used for. And there is one thing, though, on the front, we still got a picture. I have um, brown tarp. Uh, on that tarp, underneath it, I have a wheelchair motorized and a um, the ramp that it goes up to transport it because I need that every now and then. But that's the only place I can put it with uh, and carry it because it's heavy to load up. I just back the truck up to it and attach it and drive the wheelchair back up on it. But I do keep it up there and it'll be, that's where I have to keep it. I can't put it in the house. I don't have a ramp for the house and I don't need it permanently, but I do need it every now and then. But is that going to be acceptable? Is that the, uh, the, very to the brown to the right of the entryway into the yes, carport? Yes, yes. Mr. Ochoa, at the time of our inspection, we'll go over everything. Okay, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I think yesterday when I, or I'm sorry, um, when I was inspected on January 14th, I think it just looked worse than it ever has because you were oh, pulling okay. everything out. Okay, it didn't have, yeah, it was worse than it ever has because I had a granddaughter move in with me. She had very short notice and she dumped all of her furniture and everything in the front yard and on my driveway. And it took me a while to get some help to come in and help move it into the house. But I, when, whenever you like, um, we can have a meeting so you can tell me what I need to uh, improve on the compliance. Okay, if you'll call me after the hearing, we can set up an inspection. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, on the, you said on the, um, the fine, we only have a 30 day due date. Can we make payments on it? I'm on a fixed income. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do is the, the city's request is 30 days to be in compliance for the final start to run. I'm going to give you 60 days so that you'll have a little extra time so that okay. you can get with code enforcement. And okay. if there are things you need to do in okay. your circumstance, you give okay. you some additional time. So I'm going to give you 60 days to be in compliance and 60 days on the fine as well. All right. All right. <coughs> All right. Well, I'll give you a call later today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I might get nervous to have trouble remembering that. It's all right. And it's not all time. <laughs> but you're doing fine. I appreciate you. It's twenty five dollars per day. Yes, uh, for sixty days it'll be a twenty five dollar day fine start okay. to um, but I'm giving you the sixty days both on the fine and on the uh coming compliance. All right, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, case number 17-1227, property address 654 Sears Avenue Northeast. Anyone here on that property? Rosemary Thompson Estate. No one here? Okay, uh, Ms. Woods, would you present the case, please? Case 17-1-2-7, violation address is 654 Sears Avenue, Northeast. Done by Rosemary Thompson, State. Person inspected the property on October 13, 2017. Observed single family residence made structural damage to the hurricane. A notice violation was sent by certified mail and received by the owner on November 15, 2017. The notice gave 120 days to correct the violation. I reinspected the property on March 27, 2018. The violation, the violations were not corrected. The public on the screen actually completed the violations and were taken on March 27, 2018 and November 6, 2018. An affidavit of violation and notice of hearing was sent by mail a copy of the notice of the close of the property and still on January 7, 2018. I last inspected the property on January 14, 2019 and the property was now I'm requesting an order finding violation and recommending 30 days for compliance or $250 per day fine for the public. I'm also requesting that costs incurred by the city for processing this case be assessed. Cost at 
Also, the city's cost will be assessed the amount of $166.31. Those will be due and payable within 30 days of today's date. <clears throat> Please impress upon the owner that I must be feeling the aftermath of Christmas and still Thank must you. be in the giving spirit. Thank you very much. Our purpose is paid for the property on June 25, 2018. Through the residence with the vehicle parked on the front yard, this lady inside and stored in the driveway. Privacy things or rotten wood on the basement soffit, on an accessory structure, a broken window on the second floor of the building, and overgrowth exceeding 12 inches high. Notice violation was set by certified mail, and a copy of notice was posted at the property to the home on July 25th. Notice gave 30 days to correct the violations. I mean, inspect the property on September 27th, and the violations were not corrected. Proposed on the screen, actually picked violations were taken on December 27th, excuse me, September 27th. That the date of the violation, the notice of him was sent by certified mail. The copy of the notice was processed at the property assembly hall on November 28th. The last inspected the property on January 14th, 2018, and the property was not in compliance. Just for additional notes, this case was opened and closed several times um, and reopened on September 7th at the owner's request. The only remaining violation is the overgrowth. Just for clarification, Mr. C.A., you said the last inspection was on January 14th, is that 2019? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm requesting order finding violation, recommending 10 days to compliance with $25 per day fine be imposed. I'm also requesting the cost incurred by the city for process in this case be assessed. The cost today is $308.31. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Martin. Hi. Hi, good morning. My name is, yes, my name is Levi Jonathan. I am representing this matter for the owner. Yes, sir, I am representing this matter for the owner. Levi, L-E-V-I, Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. For the record, the violations, except for the 12-inch grass, has been corrected. And were those violations corrected within the time limit? Except for the grass. Yes, sir, the primary objection to the cutting of the grass is that it contributes to the destruction of the planet that people are being required to take a machine and to kill innocent life, however small it may be. This will have consequences that maybe, maybe some of you might not have to face. Yet, eventually, somebody somewhere will. This is an outdated practice and it is a violation of God's law set forth before Lord's people given in the Holy Testament of the Scriptures. That we are here as stewards possessing the intellect to make the decisions on behalf of all living creatures, including foliage. That the owner has had many violations over the last years that have always been corrected, except for the one of cutting the grass. 
So as I understand your testimony, and I'm assuming testimony would indicate you're representing the owner, the owner basically has an objection to any requirement that the grass be cut. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Well, what I would suggest is uh, my job is to enforce the codes of the city uh, to determine whether there's a violation. Uh, cases are presented to me. Uh, if a violation is cited, my job is to secure the testimony of the evidence and decide if it's under the existing uh, code of ordinances for the city of Winter Haven if a violation of those ordinances doesn't exist. Um, is your presence in the right? So I would suggest that, that you convey to the owner that if they have a, um, if they disagree with the code, that they perhaps go to the city commission and encourage the city commission to change the ordinance so that the cutting grass is no longer a requirement. But <clears throat> based on the testimony that I'm here today, and today it was your testimony, um, I find that a violation of the ordinance as it exists today regarding the maintenance of the yard and the, 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 the uh, and the cutting of the grass does exist and did it exist at the time of the violation. Um, so therefore I'm going to find that there is a violation, um, that the violation should exist and continue to exist. And consistent with the uh, request by the city, I'm going to um, order that the property be brought into compliance within 10 days or find the $25 a day that will commence to approve. Uh, also, I'm going to assess the city's cost amount of uh, $380.31. Uh, those costs are to be paid within 30 days. Okay? Sir, I was told that if I had an objection, that I could come to this hearing and be heard. Yes, sir. Why shall I be punished for defending the planet? I, I'm not punishing you. It's the owner's property is not in compliance with the code as it exists. As a special magistrate, I don't have any authority to rewrite the code or, more importantly, to disregard the code and decide that because you convinced me that, that we're of the same mind, that cutting grass is an antiquated notion, and therefore I'm not going to find anybody in violation, irrespective of what it is as a code. So I'm going to, I'm going to enforce this code as the cases are presented to me, and if I am convinced by the evidence that I am in this case, that there is a violation of the code as it exists, then I'm going to make that finding and go before the time we and you are saying that the owner is subject to a three hundred and eight dollar fine as it is, correct? Correct. Would you be compassionate to allow the owner to come to meet the standards and Wave the fine. Your Honor, it's the city's position that the city's costs which are represented here are administrative costs are statutorily uh, imposed, and the magistrate does not have jurisdiction uh, to waive such costs of violations that have not existed. We had spoke with, I believe, Ms. Tanya about this matter, and we were not notified that we would be subject to a fine. We were told that we had a right to defend ourselves. Now, how should someone have a right if fines are imposed on them for, for exercising it? Well, I don't know the particulars of this case as to the procedure. I'm sure I could go through this and, and uh, determine that. But the fact of the matter is that Violations was found and the notice was given of the violation. Uh, that happened back in uh, July, uh, excuse me, June 25 of the last year. It appears that 60 days were given to bring the property into compliance. Apparently the property was not brought into compliance. And that's why we are here today some uh, seven months later. So, uh, it was 
is not. The code of rice is the code of rice. As far as the of the life of the grass and, and uh, vegetation within the yard. And if the owner elected to challenge that, um, then the elephant had an argument that aren't even planned to live in the year and there'd be no assessment costs. Uh, there's not a fine to assess the costs. There will be a fine in 10 days from today's day. The property's not brought into compliance. You can convey to the owner if the owner wants to challenge so. the, the code. I would suggest they appeal my decision. Go to court and bar code. So are you able to either decrease or eliminate the $308 fine today? No, sir. As the city attorney has indicated, uh, statutorily, those, those are fines, the costs incurred by the city bringing this action. However, it's termed, it's a burden on the defendant, the owner. I don't, I don't want to debate it any longer than we actually already have. But how does he know that the grass was not cut? The burden is on the owner to maintain the property in compliance with the codes of the city of Winter Haven. If the owner gets cited for a violation, they're given a period of time to bring the property in compliance. If they don't think a violation exists, then they can maintain that position. All the plaintiff cases we brought to me under those circumstances, the evidence is presented to me, the evidence is presented to me today, convinces to me that there is a violation code as to the maintenance of the yard, uh, the height of the grass and leaves. So that's that's where we are. I presume the owner elected to take it to path based on an objection to the code. This is an unreasonable stance. It's what? It's unreasonable to require someone to go against their religion, to commit a sin. I, I appreciate what you're saying. I appreciate that that's the owner's position. I don't have the authority on religious grounds or other grounds to disregard the of the city of Winterhead. If you want to appeal, or the owner wants to appeal this and convince the judge or Barto that the, for whatever reason, the, the, the code provision is either unconstitutional or unlawful, then I would encourage them to do that. And I'm sure if they're successful in that regard, they can get the court to find that they are not obligated for any costs that are incurred in the guidance of the day. Okay. The owner has no income. What is to be done if this $308 is unable to be paid? Is there a community service option? No, sir. I don't have any authority to substitute dollars or services or anything like this. Now, Mr. Sia had previously indicated that he drives by the house frequently. Is that correct, sir? And when had you informed myself that? Under what circumstances? Informed you of what? The, the word that he had used was that he is to paraphrase, he is frequently driving by my house, so I am uh, subject to more scrutiny. Uh, now, I, I, I'm, excuse me. I, I'm going to bring to this conclusion. I've already ruled on the case. I appreciate your position, but the property owner was cited for a violation. The property owner was given time to come into compliance. Based on the evidence presented to me today, the property owner did not bring the property into compliance. That's why we're here today. So I'm 
given the property in under 10 days, which is bringing the property in compliance for a $25 day fine for the minutes of the proof. Cost the amount of $380.31 have been assessed so as to be paid within 30 or payable within 30 days. Okay? Why does not this commission go after CVS or some of the other corporations that have over 12 inch grass of uh, stones throw away from here? Is it something that you have overlooked? Your Honor, in case number 18, that's 973 would be the highest call. Correct. Correct. Thank you, sir. You're making a mistake.